The twin ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are among the busiest in the world. Thousands of vessels, both large and small, travel through these deep, dark waters each year. But some of the most compelling stories about these waters emanate from below the surface, not above. In 1966, an unidentified object that reportedly emerged from the channel is filmed traveling at up to 170 miles per hour over the island. This is the first of numerous reports of nautical objects displaying many of the same characteristics as so-called UFOs. But these UFOs have been witnessed traveling into and out of the water. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the dark and cold dungeons deep beneath the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Prepare yourselves to be taken away into another dimension as we now have control over your thoughts, fears, and perspective of the unexplained world you dare not speak of. With your hosts, Lindsay Knight and Michael Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, we now open the gates to the paranormal and beyond. 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 Broadcasting live from the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Paranormal and Beyond. Throughout history, sightings of unidentified flying objects pour in from all around the world. However, as most are reported to be spotted within our skies, there are also many confirmed reports of these UFOs entering and leaving our oceans. If that is the case, what dark secrets lurk beneath our ocean's depths? In a moment, world-renowned author, paranormal researcher, and field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, Preston Dennett, will be joining us on the program to discuss his wealth of knowledge and in-depth investigations into underwater UFOs. Preston Dennett, straight ahead when we return right here on the Talk of Las Vegas, KLAV 1230 AM. Your ticket to the unknown is at nightsparanormalresearchsociety.com. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, hauntings, mysterious places and more can be found at nightsparanormalresearchsociety.com. Nights with a K, paranormalresearchsociety.com. Based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Knights Paranormal Research Society is owned and operated by the renowned brother and sister team of Michael and Lindsay Knight. Seeing is believing. And at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com, you're going to believe. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, for the paranormal and beyond. Join host Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight as they investigate the unexplained and most controversial mysteries of the world. The paranormal and beyond, where the paranormal lives on and conspiracies exposed. The paranormal and beyond, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. Brought to you by Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com. Just because you've seen it in the news doesn't mean it's real. So you're telling me you got physically attacked by a ghost? Like I can tell you right now, I believe in the paranormal more than I believe in our government. There are so many mysteries out there that are still yet to be explained. Uh, you know, you folks uh, have some of your facts wrong, and you just keep talking about a generality. With all due respect, sir, you have not brought anything to the table to prove us wrong. This is the Paranormal and Beyond, and it's your show. Call us at 731-1230. Here again, Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight. Welcome back to another brand new and out of this world edition of the Paranormal Beyond. But first, be sure to check us out at Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com where you can link up and check out all the past shows by simply clicking on that archive link above. 
That's nice. ParanormalResearchSociety.com. Ever want to be an actor? Well, you can by acting right now by logging on to HollywoodBoundActingAcademy.com. Again, that's HollywoodBoundActingAcademy.com. Special shout out to all those listening worldwide through the CalAV1230AM.com website and all those driving around the Vegas Valley listening to us from within your stereos. I'm your host, Michael Knight. Alongside of me is your host, Lindsay Knight. And also joining us all the way from California, Susan Bell. How are you guys doing today? Susan, how are you? And uh, thank you for being here on the program tonight. Oh, listen, guys, I'm having a great time being with you guys tonight. Yeah, first time we met, we just did a show. Uh, that was the last show to be right. on Expo. Yeah. And we look forward to that. Well, we got a great show coming up because Preston Dennett is standing by. But first, let's get into the news. Topping the news for the paranormal and beyond this Friday, November 15th, bringing you up-to-the-minute news on all the strange and bizarre happenings around the globe. A family discovers something horrifying in their home. We all know horror stories of hauntings and other such things, but you rarely hear of true-life horrors. An unnamed family discovered real-life horrors do indeed exist. It started as their boys were playing in roughhousing around and accidentally knocked against the bookshelf and it opened. Their parents came to investigate and found a staircase, which looked as if it led right into the wall. However, they went down and discovered something much more shocking. They discovered a crawl space and it went where personal effects of people actually had uh, been put in. This includes food, dolls, and even candy stolen from their sons. Someone had been living in this unknown crawl space within their walls, and by the looks of the by the looks of it, there had been also a brand new banana peel. That person was not there not too long ago. Reporting the news for the paranormal and beyond. This is Lindsay Knight. All right, too bad they didn't open and find a cave full of gold, right? I'm sorry, this story actually cut off from me. <laughs> King Solomon's treasure hiding behind your closet and your new pair of Converse's. <laughs> All right, let's get into our main topic because our special guest, Preston Dennett, began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic unexplained encounters. Since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and the author of 13 books and more than 100 articles on UFOs and the paranormal. His articles have appeared in numerous magazines, including Fate, Atlantis Rising, MUFON UFO Journal, Nexus Paranormal Magazine, UFO Magazine, Sirius Magazine, Ufologist, and others. His writing has been translated into several different languages, including German, Portuguese, Chinese, and Icelandic. He has appeared on numerous radio and television programs, and his research has been presented in the LA Times, the LA Daily News, the Dallas Morning News, and other newspapers worldwide. Preston has also taught classes on various paranormal subjects and lectured all across the United States. The Paranormal and Beyond would like to welcome to the program Preston Dennett. How you doing, Preston? Thanks, guys. Wow, Preston, you have been out there 13 books, also investigating ghosts. You've done a lot when it comes to the paranormal in general. Yeah, yeah, I've been busy. You know, I really enjoy it and uh, got two books upcoming. So uh, very, very busy with the stuff, uh, having a lot of fun and learning a whole lot. So, Preston, let me ask you. So what made you get into this uh, underwater submerged with the UFOs? How did that come into play? Um, well, you know, I got into UFOs in 1986, um, as you said in my intro, where, where I, when I found out that my family and friends and co-workers had encounters. So, uh, you know, I started investigating this stuff, you know, going to where people were seeing these UFOs and going to the landing spots and interviewing people. And uh, I started to get a lot of reports of underwater UFOs. And uh, so, I, you know, at the time... When I started investigating UFOs, I lived right there along the coast in Southern California, right on, uh, you know, where Malibu is, and it's west of Los Angeles, kind of between Santa Monica and Santa Barbara, this whole Southern California coast, coastal area, is where I was getting a ton of these ocean-going UFOs. And so I devoted a chapter of it to uh, one of my books, UFOs Over California, and uh, I wrote an article about it for Fate magazine, and... Uh, one thing led to another. I got a spot on deep sea UFOs on the History Channel, and that led to a flood of reports. And uh, it just 
snowballed from there. Uh, um, Preston, so now, i got to ask you this. A lot of the reports when it comes to UFOs are mainly uh, the ones in our night skies or day skies. The fraction right. of USOs or UFOs when it comes to the water, was this reported by fishermen and people who lived a, along the coast? Um, oh, yeah. All types of witnesses, um, really some re very reputable witnesses, coast guards, you know, police officers, lifeguards, night watchmen, and uh, lots of, you know, citizens of various types, and uh, up and down the coast. Um, and, you know, it's not terribly rare. I think the reason we don't, haven't heard a lot about these is because, you know, there aren't as, nearly as many people out on the water as they're out on land. And, uh... I don't know why we haven't really paid attention to these underwater UFO reports as much in the past, but uh, for some reason they're getting a lot of attention. And uh, I don't know, there's a huge hotbed of activity in this particular area of the Santa Catalina Channel. Preston, um, a quick uh, question for you. I know there's a large uh, military base uh, between, actually between Malibu and Ojai and, and that area. Have right, any of the, min the military personnel, have they been a part of this investigation at all? <laughs> um, you know, not that I'm aware of. You know, they have to be aware of what's going on. It's, uh, you're talking about Point Magoo Naval Base. Right. And, you know, they're, they're a big base. They're right there on the coast. They have to Considering the number of reports I've got, which are you know over a hundred, I'm going to say, um, they have to be aware of what's going on. And I've gotten a couple of reports that they are not firsthand, but secondhand. Uh, one person told me that he talked to someone who had dived down in this area and was actually stopped by naval divers who took their cameras and said, "You're not supposed to be in this area, and we're taking your film." Um, and they weren't in an restricted area. They were just by the base. So that's one report. And I've got another report that uh, from someone who has a friend who worked in the base or a family member and said that, they're, that they have an underwater base themselves in this area. So I don't know exactly what to say about that. but uh, Well, that comes up to my next I, question, because these things are coming and going from the ocean floor, and it is right. the best place to hide anything, because as far as we're investigating space, we lack investiga investigating our oceans, which we should be doing. And uh, do you think a lot of this is extraterrestrial or kind of a mixture of our own? Um, well, there's no doubt there's some stuff that's our own. Um, particularly around, very around, you know, military bases. But in this particular case, with this underwater UFO activity, no, I don't think it's our own. Honestly, I don't because uh, these things are hovering over boats. You know, they're going right under people's boats. They're scaring the living daylights out of people. They're doing things that, you know, we don't do when we test fly our own aircraft. So if this is the military testing aircraft and they're, you know, scaring a bunch of Boy Scouts who are watching this, no, I don't think it's them. And there are some cases here involving, you know, not one or two objects, but hundreds. And uh, so this is not military that's doing this. They're, they're very interested. This is what I'm finding out in the activity. So when some of these stuff shows up, what will happen is the military sends in their own aircraft to investigate and chases them away or, chase, you know, chases after them. Preston, let me, um, you know, because this actually intrigues me you know, a lot. So, you know, I want to know, is there any private sectors that are actually cordoned off somewhere like where you you would think like the military is doing something like in the ocean that they don't want anybody else to know about, maybe about like UFOs or something underneath? Um, well, the area around the base is restricted, but uh, no, in, and uh, there's a lot of military activity in this area. San Clemente Island is largely um, used by the military, and that's just beyond Santa Catalina. And I got three separate reports from people who contacted me when they found out about my research, and they all told me, and I don't know if this is true, but uh, I've certainly got you know a lot of people telling me this, that there's an, a tunnel that leads from Edwards Air Force Base underground to Area 51, which also connects to San Clemente Island, and this is our government you know, which has this tunnel. 
Oh, yeah, we did a show about that, underground bases, and there are confirmed tunnels that link up, especially here to Area 51, and also heard one that one links all the way to Pearl Harbor, if you can believe that. You know, I'm beginning to believe, and honest, because, it, you know, I've heard a lot about this, and, yeah, it's, there, there certainly it's coming from a number of different sources. But uh, what, what people are seeing here is, I don't think it's military. I think it's like you said earlier, this is a really good place for these UFOs to hide. And uh, when I'm saying that there's, you know, like a couple of hundred objects, try and imagine like an airport, you know, with all these planes parked on the tarmac. But what we have is the same situation, but involving UFOs. And they're parked down there in the bottom of this channel. And I don't know if they're in some base or, you know, just parked there. But this is how many objects, you know, have been seen. So there's got to be a lot of them down there. Not all, only that, but you talk about the cavernous world under there as well and you know structures which they can dig out and make bases on and we don't have really uh submarines that can go towards that depth all the way down to even even investigate no we we do have you know missiles which can shoot up out of the water and fly but they can't go back down into the water and keep swimming right (laughs) i know that's what that's what these guys can do and they can come down from the sky hurtling at, you know several hundred miles an hour and slip into the ocean without a splash which we can't do either and uh, they can move very quickly uh underwater which we can't do so they, they there's a lot of stuff they can do that we can't underwater and uh, we basically can't chase them and it's safe for them to hide and still have access to a large population base kind of like you know a hunter would do with a hunter's blind um Preston, do you think at all um, the radiation and everything that happened in Japan that is supposed to uh, be having some effect on our our, uh, waters, do you think this is affecting um, any of the UFOs? Are they guarded against this? Uh, Do you have any idea? Um, You know, I don't know. You know, this is a very interesting issue because UFOs are really all about nukes. And nuclear power. This is what attracted them initially, I think, with the nuclear age coinciding pretty much exactly with the modern age of UFOs in, in, back in 1947. And uh, the, so many accounts of UFOs hovering over nuclear bases and nuclear installations, such as, you know, Indian Head, New York, where they hovered for like 20 minutes and were filmed, and uh, or in Malmstrom Air Base, where they shut down the nuclear missiles one by one. And the hundreds of cases where people have, you know, received what amounts to uh, nuclear radiation poisoning due to getting too close to UFOs clearly points to that, you know, these UFOs are, some of them, powered by uh, nuclear radiation. So I think that they're aware of the situation and be shocked if they weren't. Um, That's the number one message people are given who are taken aboard a UFO, you know, is beware of nuclear power and you know, pollution and overpopulation, environmental destruction, this sort of thing. So throughout, uh, Preston, throughout your whole investigation, and when it comes to ufology, do you think these UFO beings or what have you are basically protecting us and stopping us from using nuclear power? Um, no, I wouldn't count on them to, to save us because uh, they're, they're not, you know. Uh, I think that they're doing what they can. You know, they're, they're warning us. Certainly this is the message we're getting from a number of different sources. It's not just UFOs. If you talk to near-death experiencers or the Indian, you know, Native American elders and uh, scientists and uh, out-of-body experiencers and all these different people are saying the same thing about, you know, messing around with nuclear power. And I think the UFOs are doing what they can. Um, you know, if they were here to save us from our own destruction. They probably, you know, yeah. I don't think that, I think here's the situation. If they were to clean up Fukushima, we would feel, you know, entitled to do it again. And we're, we wouldn't be solving our own problems. Exactly. So I don't know how, how, how much they're going to step forward and help us. <laughs> Maybe if we completely at the, are at the point where we're going to annihilate ourselves, they'll save some people. Because I do have one case, and this is wild, involving a volcanic explosion in Colombia. And this is a really famous explosion, you know, which killed like 30,000 people back in 
the 1970s, and a lady who in the Midwest here was on board a UFO, and she, she said she was there when it happened, and this UFO was picking up people and saving them from this volcano. Uh, she was shocked to see it on the news the next day. It's a, it's, you know, a really long, involved story, but she was actually there while this UFO was, you know, saving people from a disaster. So I think the possibility of, you know, <laughs> UFOs saving us from total nuclear annihilation is there. But uh, well, there I has been reports of the United that. States sending up ballistic missile tests and seeing an object shoot it out the sky. You know, so right. that's where I was getting at myself. And not only that, in the last 50 years since the invention of the atomic bomb and now going into a thermonuclear world and World War Three, we all know that is going to be nuclear. It's not going to be sword fighting. It's impending. And there's been a lot now more eyewitness reports when it comes to UFO sightings all over the world. Yeah, I mean, what can they more? What more can they do? They're hovering over, you know, Indian head nuclear base in uh, New York, and they hovered over the particular reactor that had, like, a crack in it. And they shut down the nuclear missiles one by one over Malmstrom. It's clearly sending a message. They're saying, you know, listen, they're actually talking to contactees or abductees, both, actually. It doesn't, either way, you know, the message has been the same since the 1950s with the contactees all the way through the whole abductee era um, warning us about this sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I think that it's clear we're going to have big problems in this area, and we already are. Preston, you're familiar with Peter Lindbergh? Um, and that, you know, that whole situation where he said that he found underneath it seemed like a Stonehenge? Or it could have possibly be a flying saucer? No, I'm, I'm not sure. Hello? No, I'm not sure what, oh, okay. what you're talking about. Um, oh, okay. No, there was a case, um, actually, with Peter Lindbergh where he... He claimed that what he found underneath looked sort of like Stonehenge, but it could have possibly be a flying saucer that's underneath down there. And they snap pictures of it, but it's so far below. So I mean, like in the, in many different countries, there's also a lot of um, objects that have been photographed that seem like UFOs, like wreckage. Yes, besides ships and what have you. Yeah, you know, I've seen some interesting photos in the Santa Catalina Channel of showing dome-like structures, and I understand there's, like, pyramidic, pyramid-like structure in the Bermuda Triangle area and lots of unusual stuff underwater. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously, you know, some of this could very well be UFO activity, and I don't think it's just in the oceans. I've got a case of a lake in Texas, a little lake, you know, not a huge lake, um, with four teenagers who were on a boat one night and decided to go out there, you know, and just mess around a little bit. And uh, they parked along in this little cove, just a little ways out in the lake, when up next to their little speedboat is this black, round object, which they said was about 20 feet in diameter, totally black, totally circular, and not a mark on it. And uh, it was making this low buzzing noise, which really scared the girls and they're like get away get away so they put the boat on full throttle and it wouldn't move and so at this point they're all screaming they're all terrified they don't know what's going on and uh, they have missing time or there's a break in consciousness and the next thing they know they're in a different part of the lake and the boat is speeding along at top speed and they find out that they are missing about an hour or two of time and uh, you know the parents are looking for them and uh, so, yeah, it's just a little lake. So this is not the only case I've have of you know where people have experienced an abduction as well, and from a uh, USO. Yeah. Preston, are you familiar at all with? Uh, I believe the first name is Paul Hellyer. Um, Paul Hellyer, yeah, I've I've heard of him, yeah. Um, I I know that he uh, actually has uh, some videos out, some DVDs, and he was the Minister of Defense for Canada. And so he's coming forth and, um, you know, saying that there are a lot of cover-ups and there's a lot that are, you know, are, that is being kept from us and how our governments are keeping these things from, you know, saying that maybe we are not uh, in a position to accept what's going on. Do you have any feelings about that? 
Oh, yeah. You know, there's no doubt that there is a cover-up, and uh, I think it's been a huge disaster, and it's leaking like a sieve, and it's trending towards disclosure in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, I recently did a radio show in France, and I talked to them about this, and uh, I mentioned, oh, you guys are you know, pretty far along and with disclosure compared to us. And they laughed at me, <laughs> said, no, no, we're not. Um, you know, they had that Cometa report in which a bunch of their scientists re released a bunch of documents and basically had a news presentation. And they said, oh, no, that was just, a, you know, a, a few military people uh, telling what they knew about UFOs and that here in the United States we're much farther along with disclosure. And I think we are. You know, we're seeing a lot of people, government people, coming forth with this. And I'll point to the governor of Arizona, Vice Symington, who finally admitted, you know, after ridiculing the Phoenix Lights, that he was an actual witness to it. And uh, we know that Ronald Reagan had a sighting while he was governor of California, and certainly Carter did. So, you know, th this is a very political issue. It really is. Um, well, it's world changing. I mean, this can change humanity overnight, basically. Right. Well, what, what I like to tell people is, you know, it could solve the... And this is true. I mean, if you think about it, we have the, e -tech, the ET technology. We've got it. We've got free energy. We've got these crashed UFOs. We've got the alien bodies. And this is all being kept secret, but it's kind of an open conspiracy. Basically, we all know the government is hiding stuff about UFOs, and most people agree on this if you do, a, you know, the Gallup polls show this. And uh, what could happen is if they would just release this technology, we would solve the energy crisis, the environmental crisis, and the economic crisis basically in one fell swoop. And the only reason this isn't happening is because we're, you know, it's money. It's an oil-based economy, and uh, we're burning these fossil fuels, and it's these, this greedy cartel, you know, uh, who owns 99% of the wealth is just, choking our economy and I don't, uh, it's just a well, horrible Well, basically keeping us in the dark and keeping us like, maybe, you know, it's just like they're our mom and, you know, they don't want to wean us off because they always want us coming back to the government when we need something. But like you said, it could solve a lot of problems in this world, but then we won't need the government no more because we have this alien technology and you know it's about control. Exactly, but you know, I think that's what we're trending towards. You know, the, with the internet, it's really hard to uh, keep information quiet, and the news is really spread much more now through the whole World Wide Web than you know, the evening news, which is more about Britney Spears and uh, Lindsay Lohan. Let's face it. Don't forget Molly uh, Cyrus; she's out there. <laughs> right. She's right. an alien. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like to wear clothes. So, uh, so we, we get the news from you know shows like yours and uh, this is how we're spreading information i think there's a grassroots effort <laughs> towards disclosure and we're going to see a, a much changed world i mean we're the ufos are not going to go away and oh it's they're not gonna, they're going to show themselves officially eventually and the only reason they haven't is because i think of our own uh, you know prejudices and our warlike ways and how we've reacted to them when they've tried to do this well, we're definitely but, not uh, ready for them i mean I mean, you think I, we are? I am, but <laughs> I think there's people out there that are still not ready. Obviously, oh, yeah. you know, not they they can't fathom anything past, you know, I mean, like, come on, look what's going on in the world today. People can't take that. They still hide, you know, be, no, there's people in their out homes. there who can't see past their eyelashes. That's the problem. So imagine something coming from, a, you know, a, in the sky, you know, something like an alien. There's no way. Well, when you, right. you take into consideration that... Uh, Al Gore, for instance, has been telling us about uh, global warming and all of these things happening. We're seeing these things happening with tsunamis and, and things that really haven't occurred uh, in a lot of our lifetimes. And yet, we don't believe that we're destroying our own planet. One of those things is those capitalistic people that keep us tied to oil. And th there's the fumes and everything that is going up into our atmosphere. So if we can't even grasp that, how on earth are we going to grasp things, you know, coming down from the, from the heavens? We're going to because we, we have to. I think that, you know, the majority of people believe in UFOs. It's kind of 50-50, but, you know, towards just a little bit, towards people who believe 
you know, that UFOs are real. And this subject, once I'm sure as you know, once it grabs you, it kind of doesn't let go. And uh, I don't know, I just can't see it going the other way, you know, that less, less people believing in the subject. But more and more, this truth is coming out, and uh, we're going to have to face the fact that we're not alone. Well, not only that, as technology progresses and are, you know, you have people now who has cameras all over the place. You, know, you can't buy exactly. anything without a camera attached. You know, the same that day and age where everything is just rumors. Now it, it, there's a lot of proof that people are bringing to the table. And not only that is when our technology advances, we our knowledge advances more. We're not being smart because advan technology thinks for us now. But I'm talking about our seeing things with this technology like telescopes and all these infrared gadgets and all this, that it's going to be already proven that, okay, just tell us and let's move on to a better life with these beings. You know, the question is, are they here to kill us yeah, I was just gonna or say that. <laughs> to, you know, interact with us and help us with our planet? Because obviously we are nothing but parasites at this point. Hopefully they're not. <laughs> well, I don't think they're, you know, here to, I don't think they're hostile. You know, that's something I always ask people who have had really close contact with them, I'm like, would you stop these experiences if you could? Most, all of them say no, they wouldn't, and none of them will say that these ETs are evil. Um, you know, the worst that they will say is that they're very impersonal and have no care about how, their feelings. But I, we don't have any evidence of what I would call sadistic, you know, behavior or you know, where they're intentionally hurting people out of pleasure. You know, nothing like that. Um, so, uh, and if they wanted to take over, they would have long ago. I think to a certain extent, they, you know, they have. They've been here forever, and the, the, their influence is very pervasive. I think in our society, but it's largely invisible. So they do have an influence on us. I think for sure. Preston, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk more with Preston Dennett's witness, eyewitness account interviews and as well as how far his investigation into these underwater UFOs go when we return right here on the Talk of Las Vegas, KLAV, 1230 AM. Don't go away. The paranormal and beyond continues in a moment. Join us at 731-1230. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, for the paranormal and beyond. Join host Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight as they investigate the unexplained and most controversial mysteries of the world. The paranormal and beyond, where the paranormal lives on and conspiracies exposed. The paranormal and beyond, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. Brought to you by Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com. Your ticket to the unknown is at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, hauntings, mysterious places, and more can be found at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com. Knights with a K, Paranormal Research Society.com. Based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Knights Paranormal Research Society is owned and operated by the renowned brother and sister team of Michael and Lindsay Knight. Seeing is believing. And at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com, you're going to believe. Just because you've seen it in the news doesn't mean it's real. So you're telling me you got physically attacked by a ghost. Like I can tell you right now, I believe in the paranormal more than I believe in our government. There are so many mysteries out there that are still yet to be explained. Uh, you know, you folks uh, have some of your facts wrong, and you just keep talking about a generality. With all due respect, sir, you have not brought anything to the table to prove us wrong. This is the Paranormal and Beyond, and it's your show. Call us at 731-1230. Here again, Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight. All right, 
right, if you're tuning in, we are talking with our guest, Preston Dennett. Remember to check us out at NightParanormalResearchSociety.com, where you can link up to all those past shows. All right, let's get right into it. Preston, you had vast amounts of investigations out there with witnesses. What is basically to say the most solid piece of evidence you have, but yet people are not taking it seriously? Um, well, you know, it's more of a built on the, the number of cases. As far as physical evidence, that's very elusive still in this whole field of UFO research. I think the best physical evidence we have is uh, probably some of the implant removal cases. And uh, I did get involved in one of those cases, which took place in Coronado Island. And that was a really amazing case involving, uh, let me see, eight witnesses. And I think there's more at last count who all experienced an abduction on the same night on this island, and which is bizarre because this island is really filled with a lot of military. This is where the Navy SEALs do their training. It's, it's a tourist island. It's very densely populated and hardly the place for a UFO abduction, you would think. And uh, even more bizarre because uh, at the time this abduction occurred, President Clinton was due to visit about two days afterwards, and so the island was already crawling with Secret Service. So that, that that's a really remarkable case because it involves so many different witnesses and physical evidence as well as medical evidence. It's a case that I usually point to people who are skeptics, and that there's just no way you can deny it. Preston, I know that you, you know, during your research, you've talked to, I'm sure you talk, you've actually talked to a lot of abductees, correct? Oh, yeah. I'm, I've lost count, but well over 100. <laughs> you know, these, abduct these abductees normally, you know, they tell you that they speak to these beings and then they tell them, you know, certain types of information and then they, you know, they tell them where they come from. Have you talked to any of them that have actually said that, they have that they've been here and that they are underwater? Um, yeah, there's a couple of cases like that. I've, I can think of at least two offhand. Um, once I was at an... A convention in Palmdale, and a lady come up came up to me after I lectured and explained that she was a contactee, um, and she she lived in Hawaii, and she said that the ETs that came to her came told her that they came from underwater, and she said that they looked kind of fish-like, had scaly skin, and uh, something like that. But uh, you know, I wasn't able to investigate her case, and I lost contact with her, so I don't have a whole lot of details. But she did explain that she was healed. She had uh, said that she was cleaning her bathroom and uh, using a mixture of Clorox and ammonia or, or whatever it was that created some dangerous gas, and she was choking on it when these ETs showed up and actually cured her um, using a combination of all sorts of different methods of lights and sounds and things like this. So it's a very interesting case, and I wish I was able to investigate it more. And there was another case in Santa Barbara where this lady started uh, channeling this gray-type ET, and, uh, which was a really bizarre experience for her. It really freaked her out. Um, she's had a couple of UFO sightings but, and connects it to this. But uh, what she was seeing in her mind was this gray-type ET, just your typical gray. And it was telling her about how they've lived here for many, many years, thousands of years, and that they do have bases under the ocean. So, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of cases firsthand, and I know of many others. Uh, there was a third case that I investigated up in Topanga Canyon, and uh, this was during the, a giant wave of sightings in this area, and Topanga Canyon is right along the coast. And this lady and her husband were seeing this UFO land right outside their house, uh, right in the Topanga State Park area. And at the time, she was pregnant with twins and had lost one in utero. And uh, the chances of the others surviving were very, very slim. So there was a lot of attention being paid to her case by the medical community. And that's when this UFO was landing. And uh, she recalled going on board this UFO. And they were very interested in her case medically and were trying to help her. She had the feeling. And they actually told her a prophecy that there would be a huge upcoming earthquake and uh, as far as I know, that hasn't happened yet. But they did also tell her that there's, they have a base underneath. 
she she wasn't sure if it was underground or underwater, but uh, that's a, definitely uh, something that they gave her the impression that they lived somewhere <laughs> near here. You know, Preston, w- what gets me is you have all these, yeah, like millions of eyewitness reports, testimonies of UFO existing with us, some coexisting with us, but yet you have these people who don't believe. I, I wouldn't think people would make this up. Back in the day, if you did, you know, you'd get stoned to death. But in this day and age, there is something very tangible here, and I think that it will come out. Have you investigated the Bermuda Triangle? There's a lot of talk that there is a base under there, and that's why you have all these, you know, energy fields that are messing with planes and all that. Right. Well, I've read the books, and I've talked, I've got two first-hand cases that, uh, myself, in this area, and I, I'm impressed by the books, for definitely, because there's some weird stuff going on there. Now, you know, being the skeptic and the scientist in me, you know, I've watched the shows that say that some of this activity could be caused by large methane bubbles coming up from the bottom of the ocean, which kind of aerates the water and can sink a large ship very quickly. And uh, also, you know, play havoc with uh, the air as well, causing planes to crash. And, uh, you know, the whole electric cloud theory, uh-huh. which, uh, you know, can play havoc with your compass. But, you know, <laughs> that doesn't explain some of the things I've heard. And one of my first 10 cases involves this guy who was on his boat with his wife off the coast of Florida, in this, right on the edge of the Bermuda Triangle. And uh, they saw these giant beams of light under water. They're like, wow, you know, what's that? Is that a submarine? That's weird. You know, cause they're huge sea lovers. They've been out there sailing, you know, back and forth out there forever. And uh, so they're watching this, you know, having never seen anything like it. It was a very powerful beam of light. And it kept getting closer and closer and kind of going under their boat. And suddenly they see where it's coming from. It's coming from this very large glowing object. And it's heading right towards them. And sure enough, it goes right under their boat and stops. <laughs> sending out this beam of light. I mean, it totally targeted them. It was clearly aware of them, and uh, I don't know if it was messing around with them or what it was doing, but uh, it was not that far underneath the boat. You know, a couple of uh, hundred feet, he estimated at the most. He, could, he wasn't sure, but definitely larger than the boat, and sending out all these weird kind of beams of light which would blink on and off and go out really far. And nothing happened to the boat, There was no electrical anomalies at all. And after a few moments, this thing just kind of moved on. But it's a really interesting case because of the way it it kind of targeted them. Absolutely. You know, uh, the world we live in when, you know, like our government or the military can't explain a phenomenon. They have to go out there and try to prove it, like you said, with a whole gas theory. But this is just, you know, concentrated in just the Bermuda Triangle when the oceans are vast and it should be happening everywhere. But it does not explain the accounts of lost time. Yeah, from pilots and all this. Well, from what I vortex from what I exactly from what I've you know read in you know because I'm really fascinated with the Bermuda Triangle is that it could possibly be a black hole underneath or a vortex. Yeah, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of possibilities. It's one of those mysteries that's very hard to, you know, give any solid conclusions on. But there's no doubt there's weird goings on there. I have, I talked to a guy who swears up and down that he was on a Navy ship um, when this very, very old fighter plane kind of flew by. And it was way out of date and should not have been there. It was impossible for it to be there. It didn't have the kind of fuel capacity for where it was. It was something that he said was out of time. And, uh, you know, he, he seemed sincere, you know, despite the, his, you know, the obvious fantastic nature of his story. But uh, that's what he says he saw. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is some sort of weird time slip there or something like that. And, uh, you know, speaking towards that in kind of a tangential way, I have a recent case where a group of Boy Scouts saw these UFOs coming up out of the water, and this is in that same area, the Santa Catalina Channel. And uh, they counted, you know, first 10 or 20 of these things. And then, you know, it was more than that. And this went on for over an hour and a half till they counted, you know, a good 200 objects. And uh, what was weird is they had this weird, you know, and I've never talked about this before on the air, that this weird optical effect while they were watching this object where the coastline 
was magnified and looked much closer than it actually was. And I don't know if that speaks to there being some sort of vortex or portal or something like that. Well, it could be. I mean, see, it's kind of hard for us to even speculate because we have never seen anything like this. So we can't compare it to anything. So you can imagine when you see something, you know, kids especially, they'll try to compare it to a magnifying glass because that's all they have to compare it to. Have you been to the Bermuda Triangle or are you afraid to? <laughs> You're going to get sucked below. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want, I, you know, I'm not. <laughs> the answer is no. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, there's been a lot of strange cases, you know. There, I think it's pretty persuasive when you look at the record, and there's a number of areas, not only the Bermuda Triangle, but uh, across the planet, which seem to have this kind of effect. Preston, um, do you believe at all that there has been some, for a lack of a, a better word, breeding between uh, extraterrestrials and humans um yeah i do because i uh, i got involved in this su subject in 1986 and uh, this was before in intruders you know this was right when communion was coming out when a lot you know before david jacobs and john mack had published their books and i was talking to this family um who actually you know lives not far from where i am now here in Reseda, and uh, they had the daughter described waking up one evening, seeing these things around her bed, which, you know, she described as gray type ETs. Um, that's not how she described it, but, you know, that's what she essentially described. They had very leathery skin, like a glove, she said, large, dark eyes, um, bald, you know, the, the description we hear a lot. And uh, they said, don't be afraid, we won't hurt you. And she said, let, you know, let me go. What, what are you doing? And they said, we're going to... Um, take you away. And she said, no, no, no. And they said, well, we need to do an operation on your brain. And uh, she said, no, no, no. And that's all she really remembers, you know, except uh, at one point waking up in this round room and being on board this thing. Preston, and also being a paranormal investigator, and I'm talking about ghosts and all that, have you ever came to the correlation that maybe some of these uh, spirits we see are in fact aliens? Absolutely. You know, there's, I've got cases where there is a link between paranormal activity and UFOs. Um, and I'm not sure what it means. I think in some cases UFOs are attracted to people who are psychic or having ghostly activity. I don't know, but like this one case, it's so bizarre. Um, this guy had a Bigfoot encounter in his backyard. This is up in Canyon Country, uh, where there actually are a number of Bigfoot sightings. And uh, the very next day, he had this UFO land right in the same area. And following that, he had a really severe haunting in his home. And got another case just like that, where these two girls in North Hollywood were having this really bad haunting in an apartment, which, I mean, it seriously got bad to the point where it tried to possess, possess them a couple of times. And many people saw this ghost and experienced activity. I called the apartment manager, and she confirmed it and a number of other people, it was a crazy haunting. And they also had this really wild UFO sighting where it came hovering right over the apartment building and uh, scared the wits out of them. They both saw it, this large V-shaped object. So there is a link there, but I don't know what it is. It's bizarre. Yeah, I spoke to a lot of people, and they think, you know, these ghosts are demonic entities happen to be these aliens and now since the ufo is moving more into like you said disclosure now you get this interacting and merging of a ghost with alien beings either it's from a different dimensional state right well you know i research demons because of that whole demonic theory and uh, i've talked to people who you know seen these really dark ghosts who are like eight feet tall they try and possess them and they're they're definitely evil, and there's something to that whole theory of their being, you know, evil non-human ghosts or energies or whatever you want to call it. But as far as linking it to UFOs, no, I think it's very difficult. It's a very loose connection. It's like trying to link it to all this other stuff, near-death experiences and Bigfoot. There's a smattering of cases that do seem to have a link, and I think the strongest link is the person itself who is experiencing these 
multiple phenomena at once or, you know, in a series. Um, what do you... I don't, I'm sorry. I was just going to, you know, because I'm curious about this. I mean, like, do you definitely believe that there is a link between the Egyptians and aliens? Because I know that on the wall, there was a hieroglyph of it looked like an alien. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I don't think the aliens necessarily built the pyramids or anything like that. But uh, it's one of the first civilizations on Earth. And they have a whole uh, mythology, certainly, of a... Uh, beings coming from the sky and uh, teaching them agriculture and, you know, irrigation and did all you, this type did, of thing. Do you think they were technically advanced? Um, I, would imagine, I would imagine that these ETs are what started our own civilization, because this, this is a mythology that's present in pretty much all cultures, not just Egyptian. Certainly, it's very present in Native American cultures of a sky people. I've talked to one guy and he's like, oh yeah, everyone in his tribe talks about the, them being descended from ETs. And he had a really amazing counter. He's a full-blooded blood Indian from Canada. And he described how he was up in Idaho when he was driving with, along with his dog when his dog started reacting strangely and this big silver sphere landed on the road in front of him and out stepped this human-looking person who kind of just waved at him. He was dressed in a jumpsuit and boots, and uh, he said it was really good-looking, a nice-looking guy. And uh, Stan was the witness. Stan became overcome by a, a feeling of kinship with this guy, kind of recognized him as a star person, uh, what he called the Woje is actually their name for it. And uh, then this guy stepped back into this UFO and left. And uh, I know a case just like that in Arizona, where it was the same type of, you know, just this UFO landing to say hello type of deal. So it's very interesting. Well, Preston, get. there's a lot of stories out there, and it's just remarkable how they, some are similar to each other, but some are out of this world, no point. No, no please. Point intended. <laughs> uh, um, Preston, please tell everybody where they can get your books as well as your website. Yeah, you can get my books online. If you just Google my name, Preston Dennett, it'll take you to my website. The actual website address is PrestonDennett.Weebly.com. And if you go to there, you can ha get excerpts of all my books and take a look of, at the current research that I got going on. And there's links there. You can My books are available also on Amazon.com and uh, hopefully at bookstores <laughs> near you. They'll bookstores are fading fast everything's going into the cloud <laughs> but uh yeah go check out my website and uh you can contact me through my website as well and the last name is spelled d-e-n-n-e-t-t -T. <laughs> sorry i have to throw that in there <laughs> because i don't know how to front i was like dennett or dennett well anyways check out his books i mean Preston, you've commend you on your research You've been up and down Paranormal Avenue, UFOs, all the way down to ghosts. And I want to grow up and do stuff like that, but no time to write books. I'll come to Dennett if I need something like that. <laughs> you know, real quick, Dennett, what exactly are you working on right now? Because I know we're running out of time. Um, well, Dennett, actually my <laughs> Preston, I'm sorry. I get in your head, do I? <laughs> I got a new book coming out, UFOs Over Nevada. I'm just finishing it up right now. I'm missing my deadline, but I want to make it right. So uh, that's what I'm most excited about. And a new book about abductions. All right. Thank you for being on the program, Preston. We look forward to your work in the near future. Remember, everybody out there, have a safe week. And join us back here Monday as we try again and have Yuri Geller on the program to bend your mind. Everybody stay safe out there and see you back here Monday. Good night. Vegas, Nevada, Knight's Paranormal Research Society is owned and operated by the renowned brother and sister team of Michael and Lindsay Knight. Seeing is believing. And at Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com.
You're going to believe. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, for the paranormal and beyond. Join host Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight as they investigate the unexplained and most controversial mysteries of the world. The paranormal and beyond, where the paranormal lives on and conspiracies exposed. The paranormal and beyond, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. Brought to you by Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com. Just because you've seen it in the news doesn't mean it's real. So you're telling me you got physically attacked by a ghost. Like I can tell you right now, I believe in the paranormal more than I believe in our government. There are so many mysteries out there that are still yet to be explained. Uh, you know, you folks uh, have some of your facts wrong, and you just keep talking about a generality. With all due respect, sir, you have not brought anything to the table to prove us wrong. This is the Paranormal Land Beyond, and it's your show. Call us on all the strange and bizarre happenings around the globe. A family discovers something horrifying in their home. We all know horror stories of hauntings and other such things, but you rarely hear of true life horrors. An unnamed family discovered real life horrors do indeed exist. It started as their boys were playing and roughhousing around and accidentally knocked against the bookshelf and it opened. Their parents came to investigate and found a staircase, which looked as if it led right into the wall. However, they went down and discovered something much more shocking. They discovered a crawl space and it went where personal effects of people actually had uh, been put in. This includes food, dolls, and even candy stolen from their sons. Someone had been living in this unknown crawl space within their walls, and by the looks of of it, there had been also a brand new banana peel. That person was not there not too long ago. Reporting the news for the Paranormal and Beyond, this is Lindsay Knight. All right, too bad they didn't open and find a cave full of gold, right? I'm sorry, this story actually cut off from me. (laughs) King Solomon's treasure hiding behind your closet and your new pair of Converse's. (laughs) All right, let's get into our main topic because our special guest, Preston Dennett, began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic unexplained encounters. Since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and the author of 13 books and more. Broadcasting live from the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Paranormal and Beyond. Throughout history, sightings of unidentified flying objects pour in from all around the world. However, as most are reported to be spotted within our skies, there are also many confirmed reports of these UFOs entering and leaving our oceans. If that is the case, what dark secrets lurk beneath our ocean's depths? In a moment, world-renowned author, paranormal researcher, and field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, Preston Dennett, will be joining us on the program to discuss his wealth of knowledge and in-depth investigations into underwater UFOs. Preston Dennett, straight ahead when we return right here on the Talk of Las Vegas, KLAV 1230 AM. Ticket to the unknown is at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, hauntings, mysterious places, and more can be found at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com. Knights with a K Paranormal Research Society.com. Based out of Los at 731-1230. Here again, Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight. Welcome back to another brand new and out of this world edition of the Paranormal Beyond. But first, be sure to check us out at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com where you can link up and check out all the past shows by simply clicking on that archive link above. 
That's Night Paranormal Research Society.com. Ever want to be an actor? Well, you can by acting right now by logging on to Hollywood Bound Acting Academy.com. Again, that's Hollywood Bound Acting Academy. Dot com. Special shout out to all those listening worldwide through the CalAV 1230AM.com website and all those driving around the Vegas Valley listening to us from within your stereos. I'm your host, Michael Knight. Alongside of me is your host, Lindsay Knight. And also joining us all the way from California, Susan Bell. How are you guys doing today? Susan, how are you? And I'm, thank you for being here on the program tonight. Oh, listen, guys, I'm having a great time being with you guys tonight. Yeah, first time we met, we just did a show. What, that was the last show to be right. on Expo. Yeah. And we look forward to that. Well, we got a great show coming up because Preston Dennett is standing by. But first, let's get into the news. Topping the news for the paranormal and beyond this Friday, November 15th, bringing you up to the minute news. The twin ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are among the busiest in the world. Thousands of vessels, both large and small, travel through these deep, dark waters each year. But some of the most compelling stories about these waters emanate from below the surface, not above. In 1966, an unidentified object that reportedly emerged from the channel is filmed traveling at up to 170 miles per hour over the island. This is the first of numerous reports of nautical objects displaying many of the same characteristics as so-called UFOs. But these UFOs have been witnessed traveling into and out of the water. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the dark and cold dungeons deep beneath the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Prepare yourselves to be taken away into another dimension as we now have control over your thoughts, fears, and perspective of the unexplained world you dare not speak of. With your hosts, Lindsay Knight and Michael Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, we now open the gates to the paranormal and beyond. 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 